Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Great thanks to the organizers. I will tell you about the low genetic diversity of transmitted virus in different uh, uh, routes of HIV transmission. Around 10 years, we told about low genetic diversity of uh, a subtype A virus population in Russia that we thought would allow us uh, to achieve success in vaccine generation subtype A domineers still, but the situation has changed. We can't speak about low genetic diversity in the population. So we switched to a different level where we had low genetic diversity. And this is a virus responsible for HIV transmission or transmitting virus. For the first time, it was found out around uh, a little bit more than 10 years ago when this virus was uh, studied, its genetic diversity was also quite low. We're talking about the diversity for each specific case, each specific donor and recipient. And this does not speak about low diversity in the population. A long time ago, we have a term of a genetic bottleneck in population genetics, or when the population with high diversity but then the genetic diversity drops down drastically. This happens when HIV is transmitted by sexual route, when the virus goes across a mucosal barrier. It turned out that if we study the virus at early stages of infection, this particular particle we'll see only a very low level of genetic diversity that may be found uh, in the donor's organism, infection dose, uh, donor's organism. The majority of new infections, around 80% of those, in sexual transmission of HIV was explained by uh, the transmission of only one viral variant out of all the diversity circulating in the donor's organism. There are various ways of transmitting the virus. It may be sexual, it may be injection route, and quite evidently different stages that viral populations undergo are quite evident when transmitting from donor to recipient. In case of a sexual transmission, first, the so-called compartmentalization occurs when the virus is divided in the organism, one population present in the circulation flow, the other one in the genital tract and genital fluids. And the selection happens at this and this stage. and when the inoculate permits uh, the uh, recipient's uh, organism. In case of uh, injection route, the situation is uh, much simpler. In this case, we won't see this effect of the genetic bottleneck, but the trials conducted by several groups all over the world and uh, our group as well, we also see this uh, genetic bottleneck effect in the injection route uh, of transmission. This is not the background of our trials, but where, how do we study the transmitting virus? The main source of this virus are the patients with the so-called acute HIV infection, or the patients who do not have antibodies. And we can all only see the viral RNA or viral antigen in the blood. This stage lasts for only several weeks. On the one hand, this makes 
the detection of such cases is more difficult, but on the other hand, makes it extremely important uh, to detect these patients because their viral load is the highest and they are most dangerous from the point of view of uh, uh, disseminating the virus. So both for virologists and epidemiologists, these people are of great interest. In our first study, we uh, found these cases retrospectively by screening a large uh, collection of uh, HIV sera. In, uh, we found 13 cases out of uh, 400 something sera. All of them were uh, people with the uh, injection drugs from St. Petersburg to study the viral population uh, in this uh, case. We have single genome amplification analysis. Uh, HIV RNA uh, is uh, diluted or uh, cDNA so that we can study only the amplified fragments uh, with direct sequencing. And these uh, fragments are actually reflect uh, the picture of uh, how virus exists in the organisms without any uh, shifts. So that's what we've seen. All possible cases are divided into three groups. Each line represents nucleotide sequence that was analyzed. As a rule, we analyzed several uh, dozens of nucleotide sequences from one and the same patient, isolated at the same point of time. In the course of uh, uh, 2,500 pairs of nucleotides, we have only accidental nucleotide replacements. And that's exactly the infection with the one variant of virus. There is another case when we detected three uh, variants of virus uh, uh, that were very close to each other and they were transmitted uh, by the same donor. This may happen in case of chronic viral infection, uh, viral infection. And uh, the third case is characteristic uh, for a patient who is uh, ill for several years. In our old study, it was shown that for our population, the infection with the single uh, viral variant uh, took place in uh, almost 70% of cases. Which was similar to the uh, situation of sexual transmission. So, the expected difference uh, in terms of uh, routes of transmission, or course, uh, routes of transmission was not confirmed. Next, we tried to carry out further study using well-characterized cohorts of uh, PWIDs, people who actively consume injection drugs, and who are subject to high risk from the point of view of HIV transmission. Thus, we collected a small cohort, around 100 HIV seronegative PWIDs who were intensively tested on a weekly basis in order to detect the acute HIV infection in real-time mode. Besides, since as of lately, uh, for the last 10 years, NGS methods have been developed very actively 
This allowed uh, us to use not only amplification method for single genomes, but the so-called deep sequencing of HIV sequence with the help of NGS. That's the cohort. It initially included 160 subjects. We're short of time, Alexei. We detected eight cases of acute HIV infection that allowed us to study the virus quite uh, seriously. First, uh, with the uh, single genome amplification, and that's what we got. A very characteristic picture for three out of eight patients. It confirms uh, the transmission of a single vari a viral variant. We have collected a very detailed uh, information about this cohort and had access to potential donors of infection in these cases. So we studied the virus both in the potential donor and in the recipient of HIV infection. In all the cases, the single viral variant the transmission was confirmed. Another case with a more complicated picture. Since we are short of time, I may say that we conclude that a single viral variant was transmitted, but There were either two or even three episodes of superinfection uh, transmission from several donors, which is quite characteristic for PWIDs who consume uh, drugs in groups. NGS was conducted for a, a small region of the gene, 450 nucleotides in length possible to sequence with one read uh, in accordance with Lumen technology. That's uh, the region we sequenced. The first three blood collection points, we've seen a homogeneous situation in the viral population, and only on day 14 a new viral variant appeared. We wanted to check what is the situation uh, with deep sequencing. If uh, anybody has questions, I may tell later on about the method we used for this deep sequencing. A very detailed uh, description of bioinformatics uh, approach for the analysis of the sequences, nucleotide sequences. We got not dozens of uh, viral variants, but hundreds of thousands, as uh, we see from this chart. But even such deep sequencing confirmed our conclusion in terms of uh, infection as a result of transmission of, one, of a single viral variant. There's a standard Sanger sequencing and uh, NGS sequencing. And that's a complicated case in the result of which we have detected super infection or several donors uh, transmitted to one and the same recipient. And the rare additional variant too that we detected uh, on day 14 in case of ordinary sequencing and deep sequencing, it is detected at this moment of screening. And the third variant is also detected much earlier compared to standard study method. Thus, the share of cases of injection transmission and single variant uh, transmission is around 70%, which is comparable with the sexual way of transmission and correlates with uh, the data of meta-analysis and various routes of transmission, hetero, homosexual, and injection routes. If we 
take the average, the share of cases with a single variant transmission amount to 80, 75, and 65, which are not statistically uh, different. Thank you. Thank you, Alexei. Questions? Yes, we keep in touch, but yet yeah, there are some questions outstanding. Uh, uh, and actually, well, Professor Thompson made a similar uh, report, I mean, this presentation, and he referred to many examples when it's acute phase, but it's recombinant, and we came to terms with him how they do that. Early infection at the stage of acute phase of infection, and there was infection and recombination, maybe recombinant, recombinants were transmitted from a door, donor, circulated recombinant form. In that case, they are transmitted directly uh, or uh, he, sh he demonstrated multiple infections, multiple infections at the acute phase stage. It's ad lib. Everybody is speaking of the mic and together. But on the other hand, there are remaining 20% when it's possible to transmit multiple viruses, viral variants. It's important to know which variants were circulating in donor organisms. We can recombine them when there is a big difference between those variants. I can. Uh, Mm, explain it like that. If we search and search, you'll find, uh, of course, you'll find dual infection even in the early stage. And uh, Thompson studied many cases. In hundreds, thousands cases, if you analyze them, you will find them. But if it's actually this 80% I mentioned to, it's still the situation. So we might hope that when vaccine is to be developed, at the end of the day, we'll try to create this vaccine not based on, for bro on broad diversity or viral diversity, but it's, uh, we should aim at some options only. I have a question. In your presentation, you said that that way it's not uh, so important uh, which way uh, the person was infected because it's only one variant which was transmitted, but as it's a highly specific cohort, uh, uh, the fact alone that the person is drug addict does mean altogether that he might have gotten infected uh, uh, through sexual intercourse. But the cohorts were screened just like that. They were saying that they didn't have sex or they were uh, using uh, condoms or just, uh, you mean, I wanted to figure it out for myself. Another thing which is very interesting, you see heterogeneity manifestation on the borderline of the second week. It's not heterogeneity. It's just the manifestation of what we obtain. Yes, it's replicated, developed, changed, and you can see some divergence. But in week one, within the first week, there is the presence of the only variant which he obtained. But is it possible to contemplate uh, the ability of him to transmit it within the first week? He received it uh, and he transmitted it within one week. That enhances the positioning of this strain. Maybe I didn't articulate it in the right way, but as to the explanations, why in transmission of high-risk behavior uh, group uh, actually uh, actual what is transferred, like what they get, they transfer. That makes the situation even easier when it comes to total, uh, to the diverse viral diversity in total population, especially as far back as the end of 1990s, the onset of 20, uh, 2000, those were drug addicts who were infected. I think that the 
infection was transmitted from acute HIV infection donors, uh, hence low diversity of the virus in total population because virus didn't have time to be transformed in the organism due to the immune system maybe, but directly was uh, transmitted to another patient. That's the way it was happening. Uh, our study enabled us to really get a look at the evolution in the organism for a half year, and we saw at the viral diversity, which uh, was increasing slowly. We had only one instance of superinfection when in the third um, collection point we saw the recombinants. That was a unique case, but in cases when there was a normal uh, conventional infection uh, from one donor, the accumulation of diversity uh, was going very slowly. I would like to recap on what Alexei said. Uh, actually, that was the novelty, like they've shown the bottleneck for IG because nobody was expecting it, nobody was sti studying it. Uh, and for their own, uh, these methods of cohort work enable us to fully exclude the sexual pathways. We scrutinize the situation. There are some instances when they don't know it for sure themselves at the end of the day, but we record those answers as well. Microphone is not used. In this particular instance, uh, we had to look for outbursts uh, displayed by uh, drug addicts who uh, use synthetic drugs intravenously. So the major pathway of transmission is through sexual contact, uh, sexual dis Yes. Thank you. Well, I cannot abstain from speaking up now. It beats me. Tell me, the mechanism of protection isn't there. We have been working with acute patients, viral load, viral burden, viral concentration in blood is 10 uh, by uh, 5 in the power of, of uh, minus 7, huge concentration on in effect getting infected by drug addicts when they jointly use a drug. Uh, even a this small amount of blood contains viruses. I think that even even a small nanoculate uh, size, several uh, just in the syringe contains homogenic uh, virus. Simplest way to explain would be that the infection uh, is done by a big number of viral particles, but by one viral variant. But you said it yourself that homogenic viral populations in the organism of humans can only be observed in the very first period uh, following the infection. Later on, we cannot speak about homogeneity. Uh, that's an open question. I didn't claim I'll answer it. We are just recording this phenomenon. Actually, it was not about the outbreak, actually. But yes, it was outbreak. It was 13 patients who got infected altogether. Did you analyze those patients who were the sources of infection based on the frequency of prevalence of this variant in them, the variant which was transmitted. Yes, in all the cases we dealt with when we had material from the couple, uh, from the pair, always in donor specimen, we found the variant which was the founder of recipient variant. It's about quantitative proportion of this variant. As uh, typically, a donor doesn't have any predominant one. Uh, let's say if we use single genome amplification method when we analyze several dozen viral variants. Uh, each one of those uh, 10 or 20 or 30 variants was unique. Was There was no dom predominant variant at that stage of infection. 
uh, so that region, uh, that variant, uh, there was one, uh, it only amounted up to 5% of the total population, the one which was just uh, conducing this uh, Infection. First, we studied most thoroughly through sequence, next generation sequencing the donor population. There were instances when there was the uh, infection done by minor variant received from the donor or just the other way around. So it's a bit arbitrary process. But uh, sometimes major variants could be predominant, actually. Uh, so we should uh, scrutinize that and figure out whether there are special specific phenotypic properties of transmitted virus uh, which allow it to be actively uh, transmitted vis-a-vis -vis other uh, contenders. It's about interferon alpha and gamma interferon uh, resistance. Uh, actually, these uh, studies are underway or and are around for a decade, but I never saw any evidence that those transmitted viruses have good unique properties vis-a-vis -vis those which are not transmitted. And there are some studies uh, uh, which uh, refer to several cross pairs when one uh, was infecting several recipients, one donor was uh, infecting, and in two different cases of uh, virus transmission, different viral variants were transmitted. On top of that, there were studies on uh, infection, induced infection uh, done on uh, uh, apes, and uh, actually it's a uh, rather arbitrary process. Uh, but could it be a mathematical model? Not always. Minor variants could also start doing that, but uh, provided you had lots of cases like that, you might try and analyze uh, whether there is a correlation of the frequency of prevalence. Uh, it's not easy to do. That just displays the complexity of the process good presentation and discussion, but we don't have time at all.